So friends, it looks like it's time for another installment of The Ethical Lapses of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, did you see the reporting in ProPublica outing Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas? Thomas has been caught not only taking, but failing to report millions of dollars in, let's call them what they are, in-kind contributions, lavish contributions, opulent contributions, all given to him by a hard right billionaire. Now, to tell this story today, it's going to take us sort of winding through a few different news articles, so I'll ask you to bear with me. I want to start with the ProPublica reporting itself. For over 20 years, Clarence Thomas has been treated to luxury vacations by billionaire Republican donor Harlan Crow. He goes on cruises in far-flung locales on Crow's yacht. He flies on his private jet and keeps company with Crow's powerful friends at his private resort. The extent of Crow's largesse has never been revealed until now. And the headline of that article? Clarence Thomas and the Billionaire. Okay, friends, now we're going to hop over for a minute to an article in Salon about these ProPublica revelations, and I'm going to hold off for just a minute reading the headline of the Salon article. Just stick with me here. The article itself begins as follows. ProPublica's scrupulously reported new piece on Clarence Thomas's decades-long luxury travel on the dime of a single GOP mega donor will probably not shock you at all. We will doubtless spend the few news cycles expressing outrage that Harlan Crow has spent millions of dollars lavishing the Thomases with luxury vacations and high-end travel and barely pretended to separate business and pleasure, giving half a million dollars to a Tea Party group founded by Ginny Thomas in 2011 which funded her own, Ginny Thomas's own, $120,000 salary. So you see what they did there? Harlan Crow, hard right, mega Republican donor, gives money to the Tea Party and the Tea Party pays Ginny Thomas a salary of $120,000. There's that lovely corrupt pass-through. And now, friends, let's hop back up to the headline of that Salon piece, Clarence Thomas broke the law and it isn't even close. Well, apparently this stung because Clarence Thomas actually issued a statement trying to explain all of this away. Here's the reporting in USA Today. Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas says he wasn't required to report trips with GOP donor. That article begins, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas pushed back Friday against criticism after a report revealed he had secretly accepted lavish trips funded by a GOP donor over the past two decades, but had failed to report them, a possible violation of federal law. In a statement, Thomas acknowledged that He and his wife, Ginny Thomas, had joined billionaire GOP mega-donor Harlan Crow and his wife Kathy on a number of family trips during the more than a quarter century they have known them. He described the couple as among our dearest friends. And here comes the rock-solid explanation, excuse, given by Justice Thomas. Quote, early in my tenure at the court, I sought guidance from my colleagues and 
others in the judiciary and was advised that this sort of personal hospitality from close personal friends who did not have business before the court was not reportable, Thomas said. I have endeavored to follow that counsel throughout my tenure and have always sought to comply with the disclosure obligations. So in other words, Clarence Thomas assures us that many people told me I don't have to report the millions of dollars worth of luxury in-kind contributions. You know, friends, we have a legal term for that kind of excuse. We call it horseshit. And others are calling out Clarence Thomas's garbage explanation. Here's the most recent reporting in USA Today. Headline, in defending gifts from a GOP billionaire, Clarence Thomas raises more questions among his critics. Legal experts and Democratic lawmakers said Thomas's explanation raises a lot more questions than answers. And these are questions that he should answer under oath, under penalty of perjury, said Lisa Graves, the former Deputy Assistant Attorney General in the Justice Department's Office of Legal Policy. He needs to name every person he spoke with who gave him such advice. And whether they're in government or outside the government, Graves told USA Today, because I would be shocked if he actually told any official the specifics of what he was doing and that they, those officials, said it was okay not to disclose it. Amen, Miss Graves. Somebody should place Clarence Thomas under oath, subject to the penalties of perjury, and compel him to testify about precisely which members of the judiciary told you, informed you, instructed you that, Clarence, you don't have to disclose the millions of dollars of luxury gifts and accommodations given to you by a hard right Republican donor? Who will place Clarence Thomas under oath? Who will investigate these ethical lapses that are not just ethical lapses, but they very likely violated the federal laws requiring accurate financial disclosures by public officials? Well, Senator Dick Durbin, chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, said upon learning about this latest ethical lapse, perhaps crime, by Justice Thomas, he said that these ethical lapses are a call to action and the Senate Judiciary Committee will act. Not might act, but will act. Let's hope so, because we all know nobody acted last time Clarence Thomas engaged in egregiously unethical behavior, sitting in judgment in a case in which his wife, Ginny Thomas, had a direct interest. And no one acted after multiple judges lied to the Senate during their confirmation hearing, by extension, lied to the American people in their determination to get confirmed to the Supreme Court. And they said, Roe v. Wade has nothing to worry about from me. It's settled precedent. It's been reaffirmed a number of times. Starry decisis. No concerns here. And then as soon as those judges were confirmed and became justices on the Supreme Court, they took Roe v. Wade and they killed that precedent dead, revoking women's constitutional privacy rights. So let's hope that this really does serve as a call to action by the Senate, by the Department of Justice, which I think has a responsibility to investigate the possible crimes of Clarence Thomas. I would say the House of Representatives, but that is largely a dead appendage as far as govern governing is concerned, at least for the next year and a half while it's under the control of the leadership of Kevin McCarthy. But there are other institutions of government that can and should address 
the chronic ethical lapses, if not outright crimes, by the very people who are entrusted to interpret our Constitution. Because that's dangerous. I mean, that's, that's almost as dangerous as an insurrection. And because justice matters. Friends, please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again soon.